Welcome to the Joy of Development. For today's episode, we'll be continuing our under construction method for procedurally generated levels. This segment will be about making sure our room fits within its y-axis without overlapping neighboring rooms. However, before we get into that, I wanted to cover the spacer function that I mentioned but disabled in the previous video. This function is for aesthetics, and isn't required for this technique to work, but simple additions like this can often provide a more engaging experience. Now what the spacer function does is add a one unit hallway at the entry point of every room. To do this, all we need to do is put a wall on the right, a wall on the left, and a floor, but we need to scoot them backwards one unit. We're gonna add our right wall instance at minus 400 on the X, plus 400 on the Y. Then translate that location to world space and spawn a wall collision on top of it. For the left wall, we'll be doing the exact same thing, except instead of changing its location, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Then once again, transform that to world space and spawn a wall collision on top. As for our floor instance, it's just a simple minus 400 on the X axis. Next, we're gonna jump into our door actor and we're gonna go to where we spawn hallways and subtract one from the room tiles X. And for our new room function, we're gonna add 400 units to the right to its spawn location. And if we preview the game and start opening doors, you can see that every room now comes with at least one hallway. All right, now that that's all set, let's get into fitting our room into the available space. Instead of simply spawning a new room if a hallway isn't detected, We'll run a few line traces to the left and to the right and see what our available space is. We'll run a check for every tile in the room size limit. And for each check, do a line trace out to the right and left of the room by the room size limit. Now currently we're working within our door's local space and not the room we're about to spawn. And if you remember, the x-axis on our door actor is parallel with its wall, not perpendicular. So to check forward relative to the room we're about to spawn, we want to use the door's right vector. And when we check to the left and right, we want to use its forward vector, or multiply it by minus one to get its backward vector. If our line trace returns a hit, we're gonna divide the distance by the tile size and round it. Then we're gonna get the minimum between that and the respective side's limit. We'll take the result and we'll set it to the new side's limit. Now we'll use these limits to calculate how far the room needs to be shifted in order to optimize its available space. We're gonna take the room size limit and subtract the right limit from it. This result is how many tiles we need to shift to the left in order to fit our full-sized room. Now if this resulting value is larger than the left limit, we'll intersect a wall on the left side. So we need to take the minimum value between this result and the left limit. The result of this is the maximum shift that our room can occupy. But our shift doesn't have to be its maximum, so we'll get a random value between zero and the max and set that to our shift. Finally, we'll be spawning our new room. Room tiles X will be a value between three and our room limit. Room tiles Y will be our right limit plus our shift plus one. The shift variable can just be plugged in and we have a random amount of doors being spawned. And also, of course, the hall boolean is false. Now we'll preview the game and open up two doors that would normally create intersecting rooms. As you can see, our hit results came back positive, and the room didn't extend beyond its bounds. Now we'll try two other doors. As you can see in this case, the room has actually been shifted to the left by two tiles. Now I've already covered this in a previous video but we're gonna jump into our room and see what the entry shift actually does. Its first use case is spawning our floor. It's subtracted from the room tiles Y, which will shift all of the tiles spawn locations to the left. We're also using it as our entryway check integer, which, if you remember, prevents a wall from spawning at our entry point. And finally, an entry shift number of tiles is subtracted from the Y axis of our spawn location. At this point, our under construction method is almost done, but there's one problem I still have to show you. If we preview the game and open up the last two doors that we previously opened, you'll notice they both share a doorway. However, if you look closely, you'll see that this isn't a normal doorway. It has two doorknobs. This is in fact two doors. And what's worse is they both still have their roomify variable turned on. So if we open them, we still get some intersecting rooms. This is what we'll be covering in the next video. For now, if you've been enjoying the joy of development, 
please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash the like button.